Hello, and welcome to the IT Audit Fundamentals course. My name is Peju, and as your instructor, my goal is to share with you the foundational principles of IT Audit. This course is a foundational building block that is important to gaining a better understanding of IT auditing and controls testing. Okay, let's get started with the first lecture, Introduction to IT Audit and Controls. In this lecture, we will cover the following items. We will define IT audits, define controls, explain the hierarchy of controls, reasons for controls, and elements of controls. We will also review control types and go over several examples to get you comfortable with the concept of controls. So first, what is an IT audit? On the screen, you can see what I call the more formal definition of IT audits. In layman terms though, an IT audit is simply an examination of controls that are embedded in and around the IT system. And these controls are evaluated for effectiveness. That means we're evaluating to determine if it is working the way it's supposed to be. Is it mitigating the risk that it was designed to address or does it meet minimum compliance requirements? You may be wondering, what is a control? If you do not know what a control is right now, that's okay. Hang on, we'll cover that a little later. One thing I do want to cover here is that when IT audits are performed, they only provide reasonable assurance regarding the completeness and accuracy of data in the IT systems. They do not provide absolute assurance because there are always aspects of the control environment that cannot be accounted for. So for example, automated controls can fail. Maybe a system goes down or a manual control may be overridden by an, a human being, or you may have control objectives that are not adequately designed to begin with. So IT audits are not meant to be absolute. They can only give reasonable assurance regarding the completeness and accuracy of data in the IT systems. All right, next, let's define controls. What are controls? Again, on the screen, you can see a more formal definition of controls, but in layman terms, a control is like a checkpoint activity that is implemented to reduce the risk of an unwanted action happening. The goal of a control is to mitigate risks that can hinder the company from achieving its corporate objectives. The risks could be compliance risks, operational risks, um, reputational risks, or even financial reporting risks. So the control is the activity that is implemented to reduce that risk. Now, let's talk about key controls, because there may be several, even hundreds of controls in an organization. However, typically, only a subset of them are considered key controls. Key controls are the controls that are really vital to protecting the integrity of the systems from a compliance perspective or from any of the other risk area perspectives. As noted on the slide that you can see there, key controls are required to achieve an objective and the failure of a key control typically has significant impact on the organization. If a non-key control fails, that's sometimes okay, but if a key control fails, that usually means um, there's a bigger problems. So let's have an example here. Um, for example, a key control may be limiting access to make changes to the balance sheet, meaning there's a control that limits individuals that can change the balance sheet directly. If that control fails, it means that the information in the balance sheet may not be reliable because an, because an unauthorized individual may have made inappropriate changes. Please, I do want you to note that a deep understanding of controls, how they are defined and implemented is key to your success as an IT auditor. My belief is that you need to understand why you are testing a control before you can effectively design how you test that control. If you don't understand what the control is protecting, for example, the balance sheet or invoice payment approvals, the test that you design and perform may not be adequate to address the risk of that control not being properly implemented. All 
All right, let's discuss the controls hierarchy. This image depicts the hierarchy of controls. A control typically exists to meet a control objective. An example of a control objective could be one, uh, controls provide reasonable assurance that access to the accounts payable system is limited to authorized individuals. Or a second one, controls provide reasonable assurance that access to make changes to financial systems is limited to authorized individuals. These are control objectives. In order to meet these control objectives, Controls such as user access controls, which limits individuals that can access those areas, or password controls, which um, determines or mandates that passwords must be used to access those systems, and privilege controls are implemented. Next, a control objective is in place to meet an audit objective. An example of audit objective is there is reasonable assurance that the financial statements can be relied upon and are free of material misstatements. Or for PCI-related audits, an audit objective could be there is reasonable assurance that systems processing payments are adequately secure to pro protect customer information. So these audit objectives are the higher level, they are the top level what needs to be achieved. In order to achieve the audit objective, you have to come down to the control objective that breaks it down further. And then, in order to achieve a control objective, you need to have the actual controls that are going to help you to meet that objective. And as you can see on the slide, the audit objective is usually the purpose of the audit, what the audit expects to achieve. And then the control objective is the objectives of management that are used as a framework for developing and implementing controls in order to meet the overall objective.